Hello, gorgeous soul friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Hannah. Welcome to my channel. And it's such an honor to be a part of your wondrous earth experience today. I've made a few other videos in my series on nature as a technology. You can check them out down in the description box below. Um, but the purpose of this series is to get you thinking outside of the box in terms of what the word technology means. Um, because over the last 200 years, we have seen a progressive severance between ourselves and nature due to technological innovation. Um, but it doesn't have to be this way. Nature is the original technology, and many innovations are just artificial replications of her functions. So this is going to be the fourth video in my series, and we're going to be discussing some of the most mysterious life forms that we can study, fungi. I really enjoyed researching this topic because fungi and the mycelium network are probably the most obvious and literal representations of nature expressing itself as a technology. Um, so mycelium is already recognized as a fantastic um, material across various industries. They're talking about replacing leather, um, replacing cardboard with it. It's fire and water resistant. It's a powerful binding agent. It's tenacious and it's also lightweight and soft. There are so many species of fungi in fact, Encyclopedia Britannica states that there are about 144,000 different organisms that exist in the fungal kingdom. I'm sure many of you are like me and probably find this number to be very interesting considering that 144,000 is in the book of Revelation as the 144,000 sealed children of the tribes of Israel. Even more interesting that fungi have played a key role in rebuilding life on Earth after disaster cycles. Fungi are highly resilient extremophiles that can survive in the harshest of conditions, even in space. They are a vital interface between all life on Earth, and they are primarily responsible for life on Earth, even us. Humans share 50% of the same DNA as fungi. We can track many of the same viruses as fungi, and fungi have been used for curing many diseases that once ravaged the population and penicillin is a prime example of this. They have a competitive quality to them that makes them excellent at fighting off viruses, bacteria, and other malefic microorganisms. They continue to be used in the research and development of many neurological illnesses today, like lion's mane, which is shown to improve cognitive function by stimulating the growth of brain cells protecting against and even potentially reversing the effects of Alzheimer's. What I find particularly interesting about the neurological benefit of mushroom consumption, both psychoactive and non-psychoactive, is that the hyphae, or the feathery filaments that make up mycelium, directly mirror the appearance and function of nerve cells. One could even argue that mycelium is the Earth's neural network. Mushrooms send electrical signals to one another, and the patterns of these signals are strikingly similar to human speech. So it's almost as if the fungal network has its own type of thought transmission, or telepathy, that mirrors our communication. But not only is mycelium an intermediary for communication between fruiting bodies of fungi, it's also a mode of communication for trees. Trees are able to talk to their seedlings and distant kin using the mycelium network, kind of in a similar manner to the way that I'm talking to you right now using a network to transmit information that you, the viewer, can receive. There's even someone who is attempting to create a fungal computer. But not only are fungi communicating with each other, they communicate with us too. As I mentioned earlier, fungi is the intermediary between worlds. When a plant or animal dies, fungi decompose the matter of that body through absorption. So all life on Earth, after death, gets absorbed by fungi. There's a lot of evidence that suggests consciousness is not just stored in your brain, but in every cell of your being. When those cells are absorbed, your entire consciousness in this physical form is absorbed as well. Your memories, your personality, your life wisdom, all absorbed and stored in the fungal network. It truly is the physical manifestation of the collective consciousness, or the Akasha. So one could say that the insightful nature of mushroom trips comes from the memory and wisdom of those that came before us, stored in the cellular makeup of the mushroom. Psychoactive mushrooms act upon the upper centers of the human spiritual body. And if you want to learn more about the human body as a spiritual technology, it is the second video in this series, so you can check it out in the Nature is Technology playlist. They stimulate and they activate the third eye and crown chakras, causing that well-known feeling of oneness that many report during psychedelic experiences. 
I would also say that the throat is stimulated as well, and that's where you get the intense burst of creativity and inspiration. The stimulation of the crown and third eye chakras contributes to the spiritual nature of psychedelic experiences. Many people report being more psychically aware and in tune after consuming psychoactive plant medicine. The stimulation of the third eye clears the veil that casts the illusion of materiality causing one to have intense visual experiences of holographic fractals. Psychedelics allow us to physically see the fundamental creation patterns that make up our sensory experience. These psychedelic experiences, while transcendental and healing for many, also have risks affiliated with them. Everybody is different. We've all got our own unique spiritual concoction of energy, that interacts differently with psychoactive substances. We spoke about the centralizing of energy in the upper centers, the centers responsible for connecting us with alternate realms. It looks a lot like a funnel, psychically, when I've envisioned people who are tripping and when I've seen them tripping. Um, their energy body looks a lot like a funnel, with the crown and the third eye chakras and those upper centers being the largest and most stimulated centers, and the root being the least stimulated center. So... Too much of this energy can cause one to be very ungrounded, um, and sometimes these centers do not restabilize after a person comes down from the substance, and they stay stuck with overactive upper centers. Some people take psychoactive substances and don't come back. Their consciousness becomes so centralized in the upper centers that they become ungrounded and lose their footing in the material world. Just as we are spiritual beings, we are also having a material experience. So grounding and balancing is just as important as raising your vibration. <laughs> and it's arguably more important for those who are naturally attuned to the psychic energies, um, for those who are natural psychics and those who are gifted in these areas. You could even say that a person's soul partially separates from their body during these experiences. Kind of like when a person is dreaming and their astral body hovers outside of their physical body, the soul is partially pulled out of body and gets stuck there. I think a lot of it just boils down to the lack of occult education um, and lack of education around knowledge of the spiritual centers and the body and how these substances are impacting you, not just on a physical level, but on a spiritual level, because we are more than just this physical body. This physical body is merely a layer in a series of bodies. Okay, so it's impacting more than just the physical. Psychedelics can also make one highly susceptible to suggestion and programming, which can be a good or bad thing depending on your mental diet and your environment. This is why psychedelics are a common tool for cult brainwashing, and it's why they were used in the MK Ultra mind control program. They dilute any sense of separation, which can be a very vulnerable place to be if you lack a strong sense of self and lack security in who you are. So yes, there are risks involved in the consumption of these substances. However, I don't necessarily resonate with this neo-puritanical movement that's growing in the spiritual community either. Um, I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but there is a lot of fear-mongering about substances and plant medicine. Um, and there's almost kind of this demonization of plant medicine. Even among mystics, it's very, very strange. You know, it's that typical new age, holier-than-thou mentality of like, I don't need external substances to attain enlightenment. Again, you know, with the new age community always putting themselves on a high horse for doing completely normal shit. Like, I see where they're coming from. We don't need substances to attain spiritual growth. Um, and in fact, reliance on them and too much dependence on external substances for spiritual growth can actually stunt a person. Um, they can stunt their spiritual connection. There are people who do rely on these substances for mystical experience. Um, they don't realize that every moment of their life is a mystical experience. And the more normalized mystical experiences become, I think the less and less called one feels to using um, psychedelics or any external psychoactive substance. For a spiritually prepared mind, I don't think psychedelic trips in moderation, are a bad thing. Um, they can honestly be incredibly transformative, especially when they're consumed with intent and when there is an honoring of the substance itself. These are not party drugs. Okay, I just want to put that out there <laughs> um, because I've known many people who take these like they're party drugs 
And, you know, they're not drugs that you just take when you feel like being high on something. These are highly conscious life forms. They know when they're being used in a way that does not honor their sacred nature. They are aware. In fact, it's not a coincidence that they've always produced fruiting bodies near human civilization. It's almost as if they're aware that they would be consumed by doing so. They know that we eat them. They know when we eat them and they know why we eat them. I think they can easily measure a person's intent when someone is consuming them. And I think that absolutely affects the result of the trip. Um, people who have zero conception of spiritual awareness and no prior understanding of esoteric science or how these substances affect the energetic form run a much higher risk of having a negative experience or becoming brainwashed by false narratives and ideologies. In my opinion, it is incredibly unwise to take these substances with just anyone. And this is where my hesitancy with plant medicine retreats lies. You really have to do your research, because there are shamanic guides who are authentic and initiated and highly connected, um, but considering all shamans are also human, you really do have to discern for yourself, because there are some horror stories out there. All right, look it up. Look it up. There's plenty of horror stories of shamans doing some weird shit on retreats, but not even just shamans. Like, even your best friend down the street could be a fucking weirdo when you're on psychedelics. That's how weird these substances are. They really do rip off that veil and show people for who they truly are. There's a lot of evidence that points to the connections of psychoactive fungi and Christianity. There's a theory that stems out of Gnostic Christianity that the fruit of knowledge of good and evil was actually a psychoactive plant medicine that gave Adam and Eve self-awareness and free will. In my video about the human body, we talked about the Adam and Eve story being a tale about humanity's descent into animal form, and that the tree represents the development of the spine and the central nervous system. The reason that the spine and nervous system is represented by the tree is because humanity once had a plant-like form, and the nervous system is a gift from the plant kingdom to the physical body of man. And what tends to grow at the base of trees? Mushrooms. One of the Christian connections that I find very interesting is that communion wafers look like caps, and they're served with fermented wine. Especially in the earlier days of the church, a lot of beers and wines during that time were a chemical cocktail of herbs, spices, and fungi. Most likely ergot, which is highly psychoactive. The revelations made by Greek Golden Age philosophers were likely a result of this substance, and there's a theory that the hysteria of the Salem witch trials was a result of ergot-laced bread. Ergot is a fungus that infects grain, and it contains the famous compound LSD-25 that Albert Hoffman synthesized November 16, 1938, leading to his famous trip on April 19, 1943, Bicycle Day. While the LSD compound has led to the discovery of things like heliocentrism and the double helix, it has also been highly weaponized for mind control and manipulation. I personally have a theory that the MK Ultra trials in the 50s and 60s were just a test run for later use on the masses, and that the powers that be may try to steer this psychedelic revolution in a direction that turns it into a honeypot for newly awakened souls leading them down a path of deception using a New Age religion that revolves around the worshipping of AI, extraterrestrials, and excessive psychedelic use. There's a lot of people who believe that psychedelic fungi is a Trojan horse for humanity. Um, this theory often connects fungi to extraterrestrials due to their ability to withstand the conditions of space, and many believe that fungi are the extraterrestrials that will take over humanity. It's interesting when you consider that flying saucers with their light beaming down look an awful lot like mushrooms. I personally don't know if I can fully subscribe to this idea because I don't necessarily believe that fungal consciousness is inherently good or bad. Um, I do think there is some credence to these claims, and it could possibly be that just as humans have the capability to be malefic, um, so does fungal consciousness. There's a lot of reference to this malefic stream in movies and video games like The Last of Us with the infamous clicker zombies, or in Minecraft with the interdimensional skulk, the black goo from the Xenomorph universe, or the mind flare from Stranger Things. There are also lots of people who say psychedelic use opens a person up to having their mind taken over by malefic interdimensionals, which I definitely think does happen. Like I said, there is a temporary hovering of the soul outside the body as the consciousness is pulled into the upper centers, and this is an incredibly vulnerable place to be spiritually. 
it makes the person much more susceptible to attachments, even those who are on a conscious spiritual path, but especially those who are not. And this is why there's such a massive correlation between psychedelic use and believing one is a vessel for channeling extraterrestrials. Do I think the solution is to become puritanical? No. We've seen the mess that puritanical extremists have made over the course of our known history. If there's one thing our past mistakes can teach us, it's that pushing abstinence doesn't work. The solution is proper spiritual education and discernment, so that if one decides to experiment with plant medicine, they can minimize the risks, maintain freedom of mind, and really reap the healing benefits of its consumption. I think that neutral force can be positive or negative depending on your state of consciousness when consuming. So with all the amazing functions of fungi and mycelium, we've got a sustainable clothing and building material, an organic underground internet, medication for fighting off bacterial infections, mental illness, and cognitive degeneration, a remedy for stimulating the connection between physical and spiritual bodies, and music. We are merely scratching the surface of the capabilities of fungi as an organic technology. There is so much mystery and intrigue here, I really cannot wait to see what discoveries and innovations are made over the coming decades as this stuff becomes more normalized and understood. Um, true technological innovation will bring us closer to the Earth and will allow us to live in a symbiotic union with her and with each other. That's it for today, guys. That is the conclusion of this video. Thank you so much for tuning in. Feel free to check out my other content. Feel free to check out the playlist down below in the description box if you want to see all the other videos in this series. I also make manifestation content um, and other videos about esoteric science and various aspects of our world that are a little bit misunderstood. Feel free to comment your thoughts down below and share with me any fun facts or ideas that you have related to the subject spoken on today. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. I love you so much and take care. Bye-bye.